All right, new information here on Maura Murray. Uh, so more on the Maura Murray case. I learned the rubbish. Interruption. <laughs> um, I've been sent this article, two of them. I haven't been looking into this lately, but I should have been, but <clears throat> my own self, but no time. Of course, I had some other things to record. Um, but like I say, this case gets so many loose ends, it's ridiculous. And all this now, throughout this whole two things... And then I found some comments that were very interesting off of these. But, uh, when I went to go on this thing here, I tried to press this Reddit app or Chrome. They say open up in the app. It wouldn't even let me. So I don't know if this was, uh, I think this article might have recently been tampered with, maybe taken down, but it comes up, but for some reason something in this article said something about deleted, I believe, but this is someone that came up with some of their own things, of course, what they've heard, according to this person, what, uh, Yeah, I deleted the initial comment. Uh, I will be back in a moment. So, as I was saying, this comes up. Like I said, I can't get on it fully. But uh, a comment was deleted due to the fact that someone had written... <laughs> and I saved this just in case this got deleted, but... Um... Like I said, it's hard to friggin' look at because it's dark because it wouldn't let me open up the app. So, but this person wrote, I will summarize on the Facebook claim, which this was on Facebook, and someone wrote this comment, which is uh, ongoing Mac. Uh, some new post just went up. I don't even know how long ago this was. And they're talking about Warren, New Hampshire. Which I gotta look that up and see how far that is from the crime scene. But went up moments ago. An individual went on went on the Moore Murray Facebook group run by Helena. I think that what did that sound from that sounds familiar. And that, you know, that gay kid that was up there. And this name comes up. I was like, who the hell is running that damn page? Uh, and made a claim that someone found clothes that may have been Mora's. Navy blue sweatshirt with MM and permanent marker. But, remember, I don't know if she had that sweatshirt on her for the trip. But she had a white coat say windbreaker um this is claiming that it's a someone i don't know someone went through her belongings or under the windbreaker she might have had this uh blue sweatshirt but the mm and they i think the family did can um confirm that she used to do this but of course none of these items were found i mean Mentioned, don't know where they are. I think someone might have. Some, I think this goes on saying, but let me read a minute. And permanent mark on the tag, champion socks, etc. Near a trail in Warren, New Hampshire. And a red truck was nearby, and the driver was acting oddly, refusing to make eye contact. 
Finging. Figging. Fing. Yeah, Finnegan. Figging. Finging. Like reaching for. Oh, fidgeting. Sorry. And never use. <laughs> use that word. I mean, I've used it, but I never seen a spell. I never spelt that word. Damn. Fidgeting. Like reaching for a gun when approached, etc. These clothes were also found in the area of a. of a bare barrel with reddish brown liquid in it. Now, supposedly this clothes are in a friggin' barrel. A bear barrel. Now, I don't know if that's like a 55-gallon drum. And then you got their murders out there in the woods. The bodies were found in the barrels near Bear Park. No, not Bear Park. I know it's got bear in it. Bear, like conservation land, but... <laughs> That's just, and that's another thing with them bodies that were found. The girls, the woman, never identified, but found in the barrels out in the woods. And I did look that up. I forgot how far I was off from that scene, but, you know, killers travel. They some, they got the brains for it. They'll bring... Bodies all over the damn place, so. But the bare barrel, I don't know. That is interesting. Supposedly, these items were reported to the local police. Along with plate numbers for the truck, mass plates with green numbers. Now, this gets interesting. <clears throat> now, for anybody that don't know what green numbers are on a mass plate, which I'm sure a lot a lot of people do, but all you youngins don't, whatever the case may be, green numbers mean you only have one license plate. And that's on the back. And... Now, this caught my eye very highly. Because, of course, one, they don't make the green plates no more. You gotta have two, they're red. They even, you know, they, they glow more. And, uh, you know, they, you just get the idea of the plate. And uh, considering now, I don't know how, if anybody knows how old... Maura Murray's sister was. Because they all... Everybody's going back to the TC. Tim. Maura's sister's husband or boyfriend. And... But... Gotta figure something out here. If he had a green plate... And they're young... How did he get them... How did he get that green plate? That would only mean that his father or his mother drove their car. I mean, I have seen green plates today. And yeah, they're older people, you know, elderly people. That means that they have driven that plate since the day they got it and never got a... You know, never got pulled over for drink and drive and losing a plate. Never canceled an insurance. You know, they've had that green damn plate since the day they got it. And that could be back in the early 80s, late 70s. Now, Maura Murray was born in 1982. Her sister is older. I want to say shit. She's got to be born, say so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess 78, 79. Now, if a man has a red pickup truck and has this red green plate, 
that means he inherited that plate from his parents. Or the guy's an old, <laughs> older man, which make him a <laughs> dirty, sick pervert. If he's that old to go out with a young woman, right? That green plate is the catch. And that leads me to believe once again how everybody is overlooking the 112 dirt bag. Now they did come up with something good. One thing I wouldn't even expect to think of, of why Tim is involved. I mean, I would have probably eventually thought of it, but I didn't because I wasn't going that route. But it makes a little sense, too, because of the simple fact that Maura's sister was in an alcohol rehab or a rehab. We don't know rehab. And what I'm going to go into next, it, <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, hey, if it happened that way, it didn't. But the green plate. And someone puts in this green numbers. That's an old plate. And the only old man, like I said, that would have that, right? Yeah. You know where I'm going with it. But, like I say, it, but then again, you know, you, and here's the thing, and you think about this with Tim. Now, if he did inherit this from his parents, but yet what I'm going to go into next, you, I, I, I swear to God, I think they w he would have lost this plate for some apparent reason. So, I mean, we'll go on to say and ask about the claim as a, uh, the phone number, well, wait a minute, the plate number for the truck mass plates, green numbers. According to him, but, this is according to him, meaning the guy who wrote about all this, but this was never properly followed up on. According to this person, when asked about the claim, as I heard, never, as I heard, never heard anything about this. This person deleted the initial comment, which I had already saved, then friend of uh, Fidging, what the frig? Like he had only been referring to items found in the car. As I tend to, I passed the issue because it was clear some sidestepping was happening. The person then told me the majority of the account as they believe it. Though parts are... Un, oh, it's freaking hard to read with this darkness. Unver unverified and unclear to me. They believe it really was Mora's clothes found. And Fred stated she did that to most of her sweatshirts. And the reason for that, I would think, because she was in college. And, of course... Well, there she is stealing people's credit cards. <laughs> She's worried about someone stealing her clothes. But, yeah, that would make, I mean, there's a confirm on that, but they later stated it was they themselves that found clothes. They themselves found clothes and that there were three other witnesses. They told this to Fred and later searched the area with him personally and I also found an article that mentions an area in Warren being searched with canine units in October of 06 but nothing turned up and <laughs> Warren here we go again you see the 112 dirt bag what everybody keeps forgetting about and his brother and his brother's friend lived in Warren. Yeah, that's right, you heard me. I've covered this before. And of course, Warren, Mass. is where Molly Bish 
turned up missing. So could it be everybody overlooking this green plate numbers war and mass all oh, this person helped search well that's right because the 112 dirt bag didn't um reveal his craziness until nine years later or something on that anniversary video. Think about it. Think about it. That crazy son of a bitch could have been the one. He could have made himself dressed up different. Or even look different because of the timeline of his video. He could be rightfully have been out there and had the clothes. You get the picture here. And yet Tim keeps coming up. So that's green plate numbers. Warren Mass 112 dirt bag. Now, what makes sense? And this is this is the crazy part about it. If there was green numbers in mass plate, what what really got whatever happened to this friggin' Tim's truck? I mean, you would think they would take pictures of this, and if stuff like come, this like comes up, they'd bang right over there or take them, you know, an investigator would take pictures of everything. I know that's what I'd do. If there was red trucks involved and say so Tim had the red truck, I'd be put to, to, click, 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 pictures everywhere, just in case something had, something was missed. And this is what the loose end thing I keep saying. So many loose ends. And I don't know, like I said, I don't know when this comment was made. It don't really show it. I didn't look really good enough, but damn. Moving on. Uh, so I think that might have been, no, that's, something was deleted here. But this guy comes up. And I took this because, ha, that was the commentary thread where my hand was slapped for the first time. Basically, that story is convulsion of two. In 2006, Jerry Rathbun, a person known for giving false testimony and was charged for it once said this happened along the banks and property of Lake, Lake Tar Lake Tarleton in New Hampshire I honestly I thought I could have sworn I saw something with a lake well, I was doing a mapping out with a lake I might have seen that name but I'd have to check it out again the Maura Murray Task Force, basically some PIs from <clears throat> the New Hampshire League of Private Investigators followed through with dogs, and I believe Fred was there. Haley was Haley Haley was not, if I recall, so so solid hits. Now this story gets messed up with the spring of 2004 incident in Warren, Massachusetts. It's easy there are two Warrens in two states. I know a little about the actual event concerning TC and Mass as Fred recently brought it back to the fore. Bottom line, the 2004 incident seems to be true story with TC hunting and disposing materials on a logging road. The details regarding clothing seem to be related to the 2006 incident. Always this case has more doorways than a haunted house. So once again, they lead right back to TC. Hunting, disposing, you know, a bear barrel must be something out there in the hunting world. 
Um, but you know what? I don't know, man. That just there's two Warrens, right? Probably Warren, New Hampshire, Warren, Mass. Of course, people get things screwed up, but still, people forget the 112 dirt bag came from Warren. So how do how, how, don't they know that it wasn't Warren, Mass? It's crazy. And he's a scene bother you consider that he knew that her sweatshirts were marked. I suppose a lot of people do. This, yeah, this is someone saying how this person knew that her sweatshirt, yeah, sweatshirt was marked. And now you got this guy coming in like the 112 dirtbag making false statements. But if someone makes a comment of a double M, yeah, right. How do now they know if this guy did not find nothing and it was in the hands that the 112 dirtbag did it and he got all excited, but where everybody just don't want to believe stuff or just overlook stuff, loose ends. Yeah, it all gets overlooked. Bad investigating. So that leads me to this. Um... This is another thing given by Thunderbolt. Awesome articles here. Very awesome articles. And it goes on to say, here's Tim Carpenter. Drove a red truck, mass plates. But don't say what color their numbers are. A red truck with mass plates was seen leaving Swiftwater store. You know, he does not have variable alibi for his whereabouts in the night when uh, MM went missing. Moore's last known call with Kathleen uh, ended with Moore crying and was heard saying, my sister. I don't know, was that in here? Oh, I went on another article. I don't know, is this the article? Something was... I know I read in it, uh, said that something, didn't even say my sister. Um, episode 22 of podcast, Tim and Lance, ref, uh, refurnace, ref, yeah, reference and interview Kathleen had done with Seventeen Magazine within weeks after the crash. She allegedly describes the nature of of the phone call and provide some insight uh, as to why Mora may have been upset after the call. She claims because she and TC were being threatened by an ex-girlfriend that TC owed money. Link to the article below, which is 17. I didn't go on that yet. Side note, also reference article was a suitcase back seat with this stuffed monkey. Now, the stuffed monkey, I don't think I went over that, but I took screenshots of it. And I guess her boyfriend gave her one. I forgot where she got the other one, but she brought that with her. Because, this, I mean, yeah, that, that was something sentimental from her boyfriend. So, like I say, if she was going to go and meet someone up and, you know, try a different route with dating but still has these mixed emotions with her man because she brought that monkey. And like I said, I didn't cover that yet, but yeah, they, this is how emotional wreck this girl must have been. You know, sitting there with her monkey and, oh, I love you, you you big hunk. And then all of a sudden she's off going off doing something else. But this kind of makes sense coming in. Uh, and I'm going to leave it at this. I got a lot of more stuff to check out on here with mapping out and stuff. Like I said, lots of loose ends, boy. Yeah, more doors in a haunted house. Yeah, that guy had it right, too. But I wanted to just show one something. Oh, this guy here goes on to tell an interview with uh, Fred that uh, was believed to be decaying a bundle of blankets. So this guy 
comes in states that the man named Jeremy Rathbun claimed to have seen a man wearing a mask disposing of a bundle of blanket that was believed to be decaying cadaver from his truck. You don't know what that must be a rotting animal. I've never heard of that. But he called the man stink face due to the overwhelming odor seemingly coming from the truck. And of course, Jeremy later automatically identified stink face as Tim Carpenter to friend, Fred. So, two psychics supposedly said that uh, Carpenter and the red truck were involved. See, here we go with this stuff. I mean, psychics, I mean, I do believe they get things right, but there's some things that they do get wrong. I mean, my wife had a psychic reading done. They said that she was going to have another child, and it was something like a referring to a girl when my last son came uh, they all one lady was skeptical everybody else you're having a girl and it was like this psychic was skeptical on that but because of the nature of the birth and we went out and bought friggin girl stuff all girl stuff there was one lady that, I don't know but yeah, it could, it could be possibly a girl. She was doubting, though. This woman was good. But she said, you know, uh, it could be a girl. Uh, it maybe. She may be it. And when he came out, you know, the doctor freaking go, oh, here you go. I said, who the hell put that there? I'm yelling at the doctor. So who the hell put that there? I'm talking about his little PD, right? And the doctor said, whoa, whoa. Said, what the fuck? Everybody said he was a girl. I'm like, wow, man. You know, I was getting ready for a little girl to come along, have my little kick-ass, you know, karate chopping girl, knocking guys down, get the hell away from me type thing, and I get end up with another boy. I was like, oh, I was pissed. Man, that was the first thing on my mind. Who the hell put that there? You know, I'm screaming. And it, psychics, yeah, hey, but there was something that, she said to my wife, and it did not happen, so I forget what it was, but that thing did not happen, but everything else was accurate. I even had a second reading done <coughs> accurate. Um, but they do, do make mistakes. And right after that, but there was one thing now that I read in this, this is the, all oh, the original claim too, I have to go over this because this story, someone put up the original claim, and it's changed, I have to go over that, but this right here caught my attention, I said it before in the scenario, Moore asked her father for $4,000, now here's the thing, they were going to go look for a new car. But really, it was to help Catherine and Tim out of a drug debt. Doesn't pick a car out hoping her dad would leave the cash. He doesn't. Plan B is to get Catherine out of town because her life is being threatening. <clears throat> Moore's, look, Moore's looks up area that are known to her and Catherine to get out of Dodge. For a bit, they sent out, they set out, and Tim follows them, and in ra and a rage crashes into Moore's car, or Catherine and Tim and Moore all take off to hide out, and accidental death occurs, alcohol and sleeping pills. Catherine verbally admitted to using on national TV, and there's evidence that Moore had that in her car so we got this whole new scenario um yeah the friggin they could have been <clears throat> he could have been following her because right didn't want to get her out but why he would ram them in a rage that that don't make no sense 
Because if they're trying to get her sister out of there because she just got out of rehab, there you go. She's in re- they, they old drug dealers, all this, so she's going to get money to help. But her father doesn't leave her the money because, you know, right. You ain't getting the car, so I can't give you all that money. So he takes the money back, and she takes out what she could to give him, but that ain't going to cover a debt. Who knows how much that? Some I've known people that get debts and, you know, oh, my God, really getting the friggin' some big pickles, but. So, I mean, this loose ends. So many loose ends, so many scenarios, but I don't know how true this is. I'm still going on the 112 dirt bag scenario because of the green plate coming up. Um, but it seems like, I mean, this does make sense, though. And then her sister, why she was weeping on the phone. Oh, my sister. She could have been telling her, oh, more, I'm getting out. I'm out of thing, but now I got people going to try and come and get me. And drug dealers, they will shoot you up. Especially when you uh, uh, owe a lot of money. And I know someone that knows someone that got shot up. Kaboom, boom, boom, dead. And then one guy got dragged out and dragged out and burned to death. So, yeah, they're out there. You don't pay your bills. That's why you get into that stuff, right? But I got a lot of more stuff to go over. Some areas to check on the mapping. New names. Loose ends, but that's pretty interesting that you found the Warren Mass in the green plates. Because this Tim guy can't be that old or got inherited green plates. But if he was into this big much drug stuff, I don't even think them plates would even last. I don't know, it's crazy. But that's my thoughts and theories today on this one. Until the next video, be safe, take care. Out.